Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melda Production, and today I want to talk about MDelay. MDelay is a new free plugin that's part of the Melda free bundle, and as you'd expect, it's free. Now, of course, you can unlock it and you get uh, some extra features. The main one here is the ability to save presets, but you don't have to do that. You can just download it, it's free, and you can do all this stuff that I'm going to show you today, even without that. So, here we go. MDelay has lots of different features. Let's go over the top row here first. Uh, we have the dry, so this controls the wet and dry signal. I'll play something for you. Just have a little guitar here and I'll turn it on and off. So this dry just controls your dry signal. If you're using this on like a bus or something, or I guess a send, you can just turn that down to silence. But if you have it there, that's what you have. Let's actually turn this down and to uh, maybe inform you here before we get to it, uh, this tap section, we'll turn the gain here up just so we can hear this a little bit more easily. So I have the dry signal off and this is just the delayed signal here. Okay, let's switch this here. There we go. So next up, we have this minimum and maximum. What these are, are these are just low pass, and, or say high pass and low pass filters here. So I'll move these so you can kind of hear what they do. So that's all they're doing, uh, just like I said, high pass filters here, low pass filters here. This is a really important thing for delays because you don't want those to get in the way and just muddy up your sound. So by adjusting those, you can you know shape the delay into whatever sound you want. Uh, also, you have the resonance here and that's the resonance of these low pass and high pass filters as you can see here. Okay, and let me uh, reduce the gain here and let's look at the saturation. So this is just kind of like some little bit of distortion here. It doesn't get too extreme, but hopefully you can hear just a bit of it. Also, I should turn the limiter on because this is gonna increase the feedback. Hopefully you can hear that little sizzle at the top and that's your saturation. You can turn that up as much or as little as you want. Uh, but uh, keep in mind it does in affect the gain and the feedback. Uh, let's kind of, actually I'll go over the input filter mode. So this is the filter mode for these low pass and high pass filters. One is the input mode. So this is just like putting a band pass filter in front of the delay. And the feedback filter means it's going to be inside the feedback loop, which means that each time the delay goes through the feedback loop, it's going to hit these low pass and high pass filters, which means it gets just gradually darker or I guess brighter over time. Whereas if you had the input filter, as soon as it goes into the delay, it just keeps that same repeating sound. I'll try to, let me turn the feedback up here and turn this up so you can kind of hear what it does. If you set it at low uh, delay values, sometimes it's hard to hear, but if we set it up here, hopefully it'll be more apparent. So this is input filter. Okay, now let's try the feedback. Hear how it quickly got darker, and that's because it's going through that feedback filter, and each time it's hitting that uh, low pass and high pass filter. Okay, so hopefully that explains it. Uh, let's go in here to tap one. So in M delay, we have two delay taps. So we have the first one here, like this. Um, the first thing you see here is the freeze and silence. Silence just if you just wanted to like stop doing stuff, like ah is making too much noise or like uh, for this section, I just want a clean break. You can click this and it will just stop the sound. It'll empty out that feedback filter. This is good sometimes if you have a section of the song you just want to like cut it out. You don't have to mute anything, just hit silence and it'll empty the feedback filter for that part if you don't want that delay ringing and feeding back through there. 
Uh, the freeze will hold what's ever in the uh, filter. So even if you stop, it'll just keep playing it. Uh, I'll do a quick demonstration. So you can see that freeze was just playing that same phrase over and over and over again, uh, repeating. If you set it really low, it sounds really weird. I'll try to do something here, but it's gonna sound like noise. Make sure you have the limiter on if you try things like this. Okay, so that's a fun thing if you want some crazy effects, just hit freeze and then start messing with the delay times. You can kind of get some weird glitching effects like that, which is fun sometimes. But uh, enough with that, let's get into the main thing here. We have the feedback here. Okay, that's simple enough. The gain controls how loud it is. Uh, I'll talk about these more in the future because there's something important. The panorama it determines if it's going to the left or right. Delay time is fairly self-explanatory. There's two ways to do this. One, you can move this by hand. Two, you can hit this sync, it turns that off, and you can sync it to whatever length you want. Uh, you can set the length here and then set triplets, dotted, whatever you want there. Uh, you can also modify it. So if you want it like, ah, uh, I kind of want eighth notes, but a little bit slow, you can you know, bring it down or bring it up here by modifying it and also count. So here is just an eighth note. But if I wanted to do every third eighth note, which would be like a dotted quarter note, I can do that. But I could do also five eighth notes in a row like that. So that's a way you can do that. You can do weird ones like 11 eighth notes, etc. So that's what that does. If you prefer to do it that way, you can. If you want a simple way to do this, you can also go into delay here, uh, where it's the numbers, and just double click it. And you can set it like this manually. Like, okay, it's 375, like that. So that's a way you can do it. If you want to adjust this for shuffle, you can use this shuffle section here to get some shuffle to your sound. And that brings us here to the algorithm. Tape is like this. So with the tape, as I move the delay, it's going to change the pitch and it's gonna sound like a tape slowing up or speeding down, etc. The modern one, I'll do the same thing. So the modern, I can change the delay and it's not gonna give us those wobbling sounds. You might hear like a few artifacts, but it's not so bad. I would use the modern for something where if I have a song that's changing tempos, I wanna maybe change it at a certain point and uh, adjust the delay to match it. I probably wanna be in modern mode. Or if I wanna switch like, ah, oh, you know, I wanna quickly switch from, I don't know, uh, eighth notes here to quarter notes in one section. You could do that through automation, put it on modern, and you don't have to worry about hearing like a tape drop during the middle of your song. So that's what you can use that for. Next one here is the mode. So I think, I don't know if it starts on default or classic. So these are very similar, default and classic. The difference is the default mode. The gain is going to be determined uh, by the feedback and the gain like this. So remember, there's no dry signal coming through here. So you see for this one, the default, as I turn the feedback down, the sound just basically disappears. For the classic mode, the first delay uh, note is not affected by the feedback at all, like this. So even all the way down, you're still gonna hear that first delay. If I turn this back on. Okay. 
So that's the, the, the main differences. Use classic if you want the first delay not to be affected by your feedback. Use default if you don't care and you want the default to, or sorry, the first delay to be affected by feedback. And finally, the ping pong mode, this is kind of self-explanatory. It'll just go back and forth like this. Make sure when you do this, if you just set it to ping pong and I play it, it's like it's not doing anything, what's wrong? You need to set the panorama as well. So I'll set the panorama 100% left like this. There we go. And I can do the same thing all the way to the right. And you also set it not quite there, so I can set it like, oh, like 40% right. So you're just getting a little bit of ping pong. It's not so extreme. So use whichever mode you feel is right for your project there. Oh, remember to set this back at center. The last part is left and right. You're probably like, what, what is this? This offsets the left and right channels and gives you a stereo effect. So this is normal. You can see over here in the meters, there's nothing. Ooh, trying to make this bigger. Yeah, there we go. So this is in mono. If I move the right channel and delay it by, let's say six milliseconds, you can hear that stereo. If I move it up a lot, you'll be able to hear it very clearly. So that's kind of like an alternative to ping pong. So if you just want a slight delay between there to uh, widen it a bit, but you don't want it to sound like a ping pong, you can do that. And of course you can do left and right and you can adjust it in negative milliseconds too, if you want. That's basically it. But as I said, you have this tap too. And you're like, what is this? Turn it on. It's the exact same thing. Normally this is the same and you have different modes here. So let's see, I'll set this like this parallel mode. So this means Tap one and tap two are like having two completely separate uh, delay pedals. I'll try to, or I guess, delay units. Uh, actually, I'll try to turn this up a bit. Now, this delay mode, let's talk about this for a second. So this is parallel. So this means these are just completely uh, two separate things. If I play these, I'll set one to the right, one to the left. It's just like having two delays. The other one is serial, and it means that one tap one is going to go into tap two. So let's see if I had something like a short delay here, and no feedback. Let's just hear this. Just something to give it a little bit of like stereo sound, actually, here. A little bit stereo width, and then here I could have more of a traditional style delay. So now one is going to go into two, like this. And hopefully not get that loud. That's why you want to have that limiter on there. So I'll turn this down a bit. So now you have one going into two, and you get that stereo width in these delay two. Uh, longer delays. So I think that's just about everything. Hopefully I've explained all the different knobs and the things it can do. Here you have some multi-parameters you can use, but one of the reasons you might want to upgrade to M delay MB is because in here there are no modulators. So if you want to, let's say, modulate the delay times, you can't do it. That's where you're going to need M delay MB. So I recommend that if that's what you want to do. This is kind of like a, I wouldn't even say it's a kind of like a teaser for it because this can do a lot just by itself. I think 90% of the time, M delay does everything you want. But for those extra, you know, one or 2% of the times, you might want uh, M delay MB. And of course, if you really want to get things done fast or you want some more out there sounds, use M turbo delay. So those are basically the differences. Uh, oh, also I should say M delay MB is of course multi-band. So you can do multi-band processing and you can do parallel processing. So you know me, I like to do those Allen Holdsworth sounds and those need like eight delay taps. This, even if I kind of try to expand things with the left and right down here, that's only like four. So I need that uh, MB with the parallel processing to get all those delays, but maybe you don't need that. 
If you don't, definitely check out uh, just M Delay. Even if you do, check it out anyways. This is kind of a nice, lightweight, uh, fast way to just get some great delay sounds. So useful and free. What more could you want? If you do want some more and you have a question, leave it down below. If you like this, give me a thumbs up and be sure to check out all the other plugins at meldaproduction.com. Till next time, see you.